So by definition, when we speak of air pressure, air pressure is the pressure exerted by the weight of the air. And the weight of the air at sea level is about 1 kilogram per square centimeters, or that is equivalent to 14.7 pounds per square inch. Now, if you decide to climb a mountain, let's say if you decide to climb Mount Everest, then as you go higher, the air pressure decreases. So, at sea level, the air pressure is 1 atmosphere or that's 14.7 pounds per square inch and as you go higher the air pressure decreases now it has something to do with the molecules of air now air molecules they are being pulled down by gravity and as the air molecules are being pulled down by gravity near the surface of the earth the air near the surface becomes denser and that is equivalent to a higher air pressure because of the denser air so that guy near the base of the mountain there are more atoms there are more molecules pressing down on that guy so that guy is experiencing higher air pressure as compared to the guy on top of the mountain there are few air molecules pressing down on that guy. So that guy experiences lower air pressure. So again, let's take a look at these two guys. So the guy at the base of the mountain experiences higher air pressure because there are more air molecules pressing down on that guy near the base of the mountain. As compared to the guy on top of the mountain, there are less air molecules pressing down on that guy. So the guy on top of the mountain experiences lower air pressure. And in measuring air pressure, we need to consider the following units and instruments. So the unit for measuring air pressure is the millibar or MB. So a millibar equals 100 newtons per square meter or the standard sea level pressure is 1013.25 millibars or that's equivalent to 14.7 pounds per square inch and there are instruments that are used to measure atmospheric pressure so these are the following first we have the mercury barometer where the height of the mercury column provides a measure of air pressure the standard atmospheric pressure at sea level equals 29.92 inches of mercury or that's about 760 millimeters of mercury and we have the aneroid barometer the aneroid barometer uses a partially evacuated metal chamber that changes shape as air pressure changes okay so i want you now to take a look at this illustration of a mercurial barometer the mercurial barometer was invented by an Italian by the name of Evangelista Torricelli. Now, in the mercurial barometer, you have a reservoir containing mercury. And as air presses down on the reservoir with mercury, it allows that column of mercury inside the tube to rise. And the standard height of that mercury inside the tube at sea level is 76 centimeters or 29.92 inches. So this is the mercurial barometer. And also we have the so-called aneroid barometer. The aneroid barometer contains an evacuated metal chamber that changes shape with changing air pressure and as the evacuated metal chamber changes shape it is translated into mechanical movement that will move those dials those pointers that will indicate the changing air pressure
Now, the barometer, whether mercurial or aneroid, they play an important role in weather forecasting. So, we will go to that later, the role of the barometer and air pressure in weather forecasting. Now, also, we mentioned that as we increase in altitude, the air pressure also decreases. Now, everybody can you take a look at this illustration. So, we have three stations, station A, station B, and station C. Now, station A is at sea level, and the air pressure reading in station A is 1,008 millibars. Now, station B has a height of 1,000 meters, and everybody look at the air pressure on station B. The air pressure at station B is 915 millibars. And everybody look at station C. Station C is 1,800 meters high. And the air pressure reading at station C is 840 millibars. So the higher we go, the air pressure decreases. Now, there are times in some places that they would experience high pressure and in some places they would experience low pressure. Now, these differences in air pressure will result in the movement of air which we call as wind. So, wind is the result of these horizontal differences in air pressure and air or wind moves from regions of high pressure to regions of low pressure. Air or wind moves from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. Now to illustrate the movement of the air as a result of the differences in air pressure, I want you now to take a look at this diagram. Now, the heat from the sun also plays an important role in this general movement of air. Now, everybody look at the diagram. So, as the sun heats up the air, the air molecules begins to move. There is increase in the kinetic movement of molecules. And as a result, the air becomes less dense as it is heated. And as the air becomes less dense, heated air rises, creating an area of low pressure. Low pressure because the air is lighter because it is less dense. Now, as the air cools off, there is decrease in the kinetic movement of molecules. So, the air becomes denser, the air becomes heavier, and as a result, this creates a region of high pressure. So that is the general circulation of air. Air moves from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. And that's how winds are produced. Winds are produced as a result of this difference in air pressure. Air moves from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Now, to further illustrate this movement of the air as a result of the differences in air pressure, let's take a look at this diagram. Now again, the sun plays an important role in this movement of air. Now, as the sun heats up the air, the air molecules begins to move. There is an increase in the kinetic movement of molecules. And as a result, the air expands when it is heated. And as the air expands, it becomes lighter. And this heated air, because it is lighter, begins to rise, creating an area of low pressure. Now, as the heated air cools off, there is a decrease in the kinetic movement of molecules. So the air becomes denser, the air becomes heavier, and this cold air sinks, creating a region of high pressure. So this difference in pressure will result in a general movement of air from a region of high pressure 
to a region of low pressure. So that's how winds are produced. Winds are produced because of this difference in pressure. So heated air rises creating a low pressure area and cold air sinks creating a region of high pressure. So this difference in pressure will result in that general circulation of air from high pressure to low pressure creating winds. So as you could see, the sun really drives our weather. As the sun heats up the air, the heated air expands, producing an area of low pressure because the heated air rises and cold air sinks, creating a region of high pressure. So always take note that as heated air rises, it carries a lot of moisture and this moisture will result in the formation of clouds clouds would bring rain so we usually associate low pressure with cloud formation and rain a low pressure area is always associated with bad weather now cold air sinks creating a region of high pressure now cold air contains very little moisture so there's no cloud formation so no clouds means no rain no precipitation so a high pressure area is usually associated with dry air and that means fair and good weather so now you know the relationship between high pressure and low pressure and whether we would get bad or fair weather. So let's take a look at this diagram. So as heated air rises, this heated air packs a lot of moisture. And this moisture will trigger the formation of clouds clouds would bring rain so a low pressure area is always associated with wet cloudy and rainy weather condition okay now for cold air we know that cold air is denser cold air is heavier so cold air sinks or cold air descends this will create a region of high pressure now cold air contains very little moisture so if there's little moisture that means there is little chance for clouds to form so if there are no clouds there's no precipitation so a high pressure area is always equated with dry bright sunny and fair weather so isn't that fascinating about winds? All right, now to summarize the production or the creation of winds. So take note that winds are created by number one, heating the air. So as a result of heated air rising, there is a decrease in atmospheric pressure. Warm air rises, creating a low pressure area. Now, cool air rushes into replacing the warm air. Cold air is denser and this creates a high pressure area. And because of this difference in pressure, air moves from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. And as a result, air moves and winds form. Okay, so now you know how winds are created. Okay, so let's talk about now pressure gradient and pressure maps. Now, the pressure gradient force is the primary driving force of wind as a result from pressure changes that occur over a given distance as depicted by the spacing of isobars. These are lines drawn on a weather map that connects places of equal air pressure. And the spacing of these isobars indicate 
the amount of pressure change occurring over a given distance expressed as a pressure difference or a pressure gradient. Okay, everybody kindly take a look at this weather map. So those lines are isobars. These isobars, they indicate areas of equal pressure. So by just looking at these isobars and knowing the pressure differences, we can now determine how much pressure changes that occur in a given area. Now, we all know for a fact that differences in air pressure is caused by the unequal heating of the Earth's surface. So, we know for a fact that the equator receives more heat from the sun than the polar regions. So, the air above the equator is heated more, causing the air to become less dense. And when the air becomes less dense, the air becomes lighter. So heated air rises, creating a low pressure area. And we know for a fact that as the air is heated, it brings a lot of moisture. And this will trigger the formation of clouds and precipitation so an area of low pressure is always equated with stormy weather now at the poles we have cold air now cold air is denser so cold air sinks creating an area of high pressure and cold air brings little moisture so this region of high pressure is always associated with clear, good, fair weather. Now this difference in pressure, high pressure and low pressure will cause air to move. And this is what we call winds. Okay, so everybody, I want you now to take a look at this diagram. So, there are places wherein the earth receives more heat from the sun, like the equator. And at the poles, the earth receives little heat. So, as the equator is heated, the heated air becomes less dense. So, this heated air rises and this will create an area of low pressure. And as the air is heated, it brings a lot of moisture. So this moisture will trigger the formation of clouds. Clouds would bring rain. That is why an area of low pressure is always associated with stormy, bad weather. Now at the poles, the air is cold. And cold air is more dense or the air is heavier. So cold air sinks creating an area of high pressure and cold air brings very little moisture so that means there's little chance for clouds to form so a high pressure area is always associated with fair and good weather and this difference in pressure will cause the air to move from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure so this movement of air is what we call as wind. So to further illustrate this movement of air or wind due to differences in air pressure, let's take a look at this diagram of the circulation of air inside a room. Alright, so can you see that radiator at one corner of the room? So that radiator heats up the air. The heated air becomes less dense. So that heated air rises. So it creates an area of low pressure at that corner of the room. And as the warm air rises, it nears that window at the other corner of the room. So eventually the air cools and it becomes more dense or it becomes heavier. So that cool air sinks. And at that corner of the room near the window, that creates an area of high pressure. So, the movement now of air inside the room would be 
from a region of high pressure which is near the window to an area of low pressure near the radiator. So that's the general movement of air inside the room from high pressure to low pressure. And that's what we call a convection cell. Now that is really fascinating about the general circulation of air inside a room. Plus also we know from the previous lesson that the passage of a low pressure area is usually associated with unstable conditions and stormy weather because we know that that heated air packs a lot of moisture. As the air rises, it creates a low pressure area and that heated air contains a lot of moisture that may trigger the formation of clouds and precipitation or rain now on the other hand fair weather can usually be expected with the approach of a high pressure system so a high pressure area is always associated with good fair weather because we know that cold air contains very little moisture so there is little chance for clouds to form so an area of high pressure is always associated with fair and good weather condition.